Hello, my name is Verity Jones and one, I'm one of the authors of the Opening Door series with Bob Cox and Leah Crawford. Today, I want to take a look at some of the ideas from our Opening Doors to a Richer Curriculum for ages 10 to 13. The objective today is to really think about how we can identify how a text is structured to build tension and mood and even character. What I want to do is think about poetry, but instead of going straight to the poetry first, let's think about watching some film. Film's great, it's accessible, we're familiar with lots and lots of storylines, and it can be a route into some great reading and some great writing. The first activity I'd like you to do is watch the start of the Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of the Black Pearl. This doesn't mean we have to watch the whole film, just the first few minutes. As you watch, take a look at how the camera zooms from a wide angle shot to a close up of a girl's face. If you haven't got a copy of the film, then use an internet search for the opening sequence and you should be able to find it. Pause this video and take a look. Hopefully you've been able to find it and you've seen how tension and mood were built up through the shots, starting with that wide angle shot going through the mist, getting closer and closer to the ship, and then finally ending on the ghostly vision of that little girl on deck. Having watched that film clip, let's now see how the strategies that are used in film can also be spotted in some poetry. So we're going to look at The Dong with the Luminous Nose by Edward Lee. Here, the first stanza will be that wide angled lens. Let's take a look. When awful darkness and silence reign over the great Grambolian plain through the long, long wintry night, when the angry breakers roar as they beat on the rocky shore, when storm clouds brood on the towering heights of the hills of Chanky Bore. That's our first chunk. Now let's go into our second stanza where we're starting to zoom in. Let's see what we're zooming into. Then, through the vast and gloomy dark, there moves what seems a fiery spark, a lonely spark with silvery rays piercing the cold black night, a meteor strange and bright. Hither and thither the vision strays a single lurid light. We're going to zoom in once more for a bit of a close-up in this final and last stanza. Slowly it wander, pauses, creeps, and on it sparkles, flashes and leaps, and ever as onward it gleaming goes, a light on the bong tree stems it throws, and those who watch it that midnight hour from hall or terrace or lofty tower cry as the wild light passes along, the dong! The dong, the wandering dong through the forest goes. The dong, the dong, the dong with a luminous nose. Now I've read it through, why don't you pause the video and have another read through. Have a chat or a think about how the structure has been used to build the tension and mood of the poem. When you're ready. Press play again. So what did you spot? In our opening doors the books, we always try and think about what an excellent response to a poem or a piece of writing might look like. So let's have a think. Did you spot the sense of foreboding in that first stanza where the setting's introduced? Lear uses particular language. The awful darkness, the long, long wintry nights angry breakers roar and storm clouds brooding. It really sets that mood and scene. Did you spot the contrast of dark and light in the second stanza, again developing this mystery and tension? Did you spot the use of dashes, 
that slow down the rhythm and create a clear image of what the creature is doing in that third stanza. The use of punctuation is really interesting. And finally, did you spot how that last line delivers some amusement? Who would have thought that creature that we saw from afar when we get up close has an illuminous nose of all things? Once you've spotted this strategy a few times, you'll be able to see it everywhere. Have a look in books, have a look in extra films, have a look on adverts. You'll see it being used as a way of really grabbing the attention and drawing the viewer and the reader in. So why not, for our third activity, have a bit of a play with this strategy? Let's think about three sentences that we can put together these three camera angles to develop suspense, tension and mood. Have a go at finishing them off. You might want to do this orally just by talking or you might even want to write it out. So let's have a go. What are you going to finish the first sentence off with? In the vast darkness. Think about the wide angle. How are you going to introduce that context? Now let's look at the medium angle, glimmering in the distance. What could you do to finish that sentence off? Finally, a footstep. Let's bring it right in, zoom that camera in and do that close up. Pause the video and see what you can get. Sometimes it can be really helpful to see how other children have done the writing based on the same things that they've worked through. So let's have a look because here at the Opening Doors office we're really lucky to have children send in their work to us. And if you look on our publisher's website and the link is on the page at Crown House you'll be able to see this example from Jude. He starts by saying black, just black, blacker than the blackest black, whilst darkness filtered the light the moon casted sinister shadows on the vile, twisted buildings of Bristol, which seemed to cackle viciously in the wind as though enjoying this vast hold in the fatigueful silence. So that's his um, wide angle. He then zooms in a little closer. And now a boat, majestic but spectral, is its bow slicing through the silent, slumbering night. Flags ripple desperately on its corpse-like mast hissing and groaning in the stinging air, which lashed and crashed against the cowering surface of the vast ship encased in its claw-like cage of effervescent glass. And now we're zooming in a bit more. We zoom in more to a window, and behind this window there seems to be a shape. Hopefully you can see how Jude has used what he's seen in the poem, the zooming in, but also from that first clip of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, where the strategy has been used to zoom in and create tension and mood. Activity four then. I talked earlier about how once you spot this kind of strategy, you start to see it everywhere. So here are some ideas about where you might be able to find some great examples. And just like when we watched the film, we didn't have to watch the whole film to see this example. We don't have to read a massive amount to see some fantastic examples. So in The Beast Player, you could read just the first two paragraphs um, of part four of the prologue. The first sighting of Moby Dick in Herman Melville's classic text, that draws the reader from the open sea to a pointing motionless arm. Or in Once and Then by Maurice Gleitzman, we've got um, a mountainside going to an orphanage, a lunch table, and then to a whole carrot in some soup in just 23 lines, zooming right in. It also works in picture books. So in Nicola Davis's poem in her picture book, King of the Sky, you can see the same technique going from rain on a hill to a lonely figure. Or let's even think about William Wordsworth, I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud. The first three paragraphs of Richard Adams' Watership Down are also a great way of looking at how we gradually zoom in 
from a meadow to just two rabbits. I hope you've enjoyed thinking about how we can use zooming in to create tension and mood. We've got lots of other examples of finding and experimenting and enjoying strategies in English. And we hope you join us again soon.